Hello Internet! Welcome to another tutorial for Minecraft. This time, I'm answering a question that I see asked all the time on the various uh, modded Minecraft subreddits and forums that I frequent, and that is, how do I maintain a certain level of a given item inside my ME system? There's usually some variations here and there, but it boils down to essentially that whoever's asking the question wants to keep a certain level of stock of an item on hand in their system without having to actually go in and request it. Just have it be made for them and be available. The answer is actually relatively simple, as you can probably tell from the length of this video, and there's two different ways to do it. So we're gonna be going over the two different ways that you can do it. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that whatever process it is that you are looking to get the end result from, you have set up with a crafting pattern in your ME system. So for this example, I'm going to be using glass. So it just takes a little piece of sand, throws it into a smelter, and that makes your glass. So there is a interface step right, set up right here with a pattern on it and then of course the system is set up to accept that glass so as you can tell I can then just order the glass manually but if I wanted to maintain say a hundred glass in my ME system at all times here's how you do that the first way that you can do that is by using some form of storage so a chest you could use a memory chest you could use a um, ME chest you just need to be able to block out all the slots except for the ones that you are looking to use with some other item. Then you will place a storage bus on the side. And if you're using a vanilla chest, it is important to configure that storage bus with the item that you are looking to store in it. You don't need to worry about your filler items because ideally those should never come out of this chest. But when the items themselves that you are filling, um, when, if an entire stack is removed, there's an empty space that your ME system will see, and it will put some random item into that. The next item that goes into your ME system has a very good chance of ending up in that slot, which can mess up your, uh, your, uh, your stocked items. Uh, so then that's, that's how you get the items out. How do you get the items in? Well, with an export bus. The trick to the export bus is that you're going to need to put a crafting card into the export bus and then change the little icon that appears over here from stocked items or craft to only craft. And that's important that you have to change that because if you don't, you're essentially just creating a loop of the glass that's in here gets pulled out through the storage bus, looped back around, and then put right back into the same chest with this export bus. So it accomplishes nothing. So you need to make sure that you change that to craft only. And then once it's all set up, you just link it to your system. And you can see that the smelting factory is now smelting away, making glass. And we're going to steadily see this number here increase until the stock, until it fills up. If you're using something like a memory chest, the process is almost exactly the same. The only difference is you can simply lock the slots to whatever items you're looking for. So two stacks of glass go here, and then the rest of these are empty. Uh, using a memory chest has the advantage that if you look in your ME system, you don't end up with these random junk items in that uh, you can't do anything with. And it's also very important that you never take these out because it can mess up your chest. And if you pick them up and then put them back, they're going to end up in your ME storage, not back in the chest, because the storage bus does not have a filter for them. So as we can see, we've got st items steadily going into this chest here. The downside, of course, to this is that we're going to end up with two stacks worth of whatever item it is, not the 100 that we're looking for. So we're going to have an extra 28 items. Now, depending on what item it is specifically that you're looking at storing, that can be acceptable. If you're looking for a method that's a little bit more precise and allows you to configure it after the fact, we want to make use of this setup over here. Now, this setup is, in essence, exactly the same as the chest setup with the chest. The difference is that we're replacing the storage 
block, so the chest, and the storage bus with an ME interface. And this is unconfigured. The only thing that we're using this for is as a way for items to be accepted into the ME system. The interface works the quickest because it accepts items as soon as they're pushed into it. There's no delay like there is with an import bus or a storage bus. We of course have the export bus set up and it's set up exactly the same way with the glass in the export slot, the crafting card in the expansion slot, and the crafting behavior set to only craft items. The trick is here. We use a redstone card to turn the export bus into a redstone activated, or in this case, deactivated item. So redstone card, and then we will change this to active without signal. It's easy enough to invert it and use it the other way if that's what you prefer. You just don't want to use the active once per pulse option because that won't work, do what you want it to do. So active without signal is generally the best way to do that. And then we are going to make use of the ME level emitter. And this guy right here is actually a lot of fun once you figure out how these work. You simply take the item that you are looking to count, you place it here, and then you set how many items that you want, that you are concerned about. So in this case, 100 is what we are after. So we set this up to 100. Then you ch can change the redstone mode to either emit when levels are above or equal to, or when levels are below. So it's basically, do you want it to turn on once you have reached at least this number? Or do you want it to be on when it's under that number? Whatever method you set up your export bus to, you want to make sure that this is set up the same way. So you want, so it's on when you want it to be on and off when you want it to be off. Uh, the advantage of doing it the way that I have it is that I can disable the entire system with a lever very easily. But if I turn this lever off, now this setup right here is now active. And if we come over here, we can see that the smelting factory is now churning away and making more glass, which is steadily being dropped into the system. Now we have 102 glass in the system. And you're almost always going to end up with one or two above what it is that you asked for, just because there will probably be one being processed when it shuts off. And that process will still finish, even though it's been turned off. So one or two extra is fine. If it bothers you, you can tinker with the values and come up with the exact amount that works exactly to get you right to the number that you're looking for. But as we can see, the level emitter is now active, which means that the export bus is not attempting to export items. And we have our stock in the system. If we were to take out half a stack, we can see that the level emitter turns off. And the smelting factory activates to begin bringing that stock back up to where we wanted it. There's advantages to doing both systems. Using this way gives you much finer control over how many items you have, as well as also allowing you to have quantities that are far in excess of what can fit in a chest. This method uses two channels, while this method over here uses three. So if you're playing with something that uses channels, that can be a concern as well. But otherwise, it's a pretty simple system to set up, and once you've got it uh, figured out, not terribly difficult to replicate and expand upon as you need to. So if you have any further questions, you can ask me down in the comments. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Silly Snowfox. I am more than happy to answer any other questions that you might have. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials or informational videos, let me know. I would be more than happy to consider them. Until then, I hope to see you in the next video. I hope you have a, yourselves a wonderful time. See you in the next video, and happy Minecrafting.